into which verticals you think are, are ripest for sure. this? I mean, yep. is it self-driving cars? Is it education? Is it, as Ruth suggested, entertainment? Um, my favorite verticals right now are functional areas where you have a lot of people doing manual data entry and having to do manual follow-ups. This could include salespeople, customer support reps, um, as well as uh, analysts for things like security logs. So, so the plumbers, the inside guys? Uh, some might. I would say <laughs> they're kind of the folks who just have to deal with a lot of data entry and then trying to ju make judgments on that data, right? So. I'm already seeing companies now in the AI space making million dollar uh, enterprise value purchase orders powering, say, customer support for Example. the Comcast of the world. Uh, my name is Sam. I am, I'm currently working on a company called Fireflies on okay. AI. We use deep NLP to, trans to transform What's conversations. NLP? We use deep natural language processing, which okay. involves um, machine reading like, conversations to transform what you're saying in everyday life into tasks. Uh, we think that conversations are really the origin of everything that you need to do. Every workflow that you have is generated from you telling someone to, that you're going to do something in Slack or maybe a phone call. And the real drop off happens, like as you said, when you have to go manually enter it into your system of record. And so we. So you enter it for? Exactly. We automatically identify it, suggest it, and route it. So to you're going to put me out of work, Samuel? <laughs> we, well, our, we don't want to put you out of work. We think that. AI is a tool, and it's going to augment you. What this enables is quantified conversation, quantified Quantified worker. conversation. You guys should write that down. Right. It's a bit scary. What does that mean? Well, let's take a, a company like uh, Chorus.ai. They're literally doing voice recognition on conversations salespeople have. You score that with the results of those salespeople, you can probably say, wow, this person has better conversational skills, and here's exactly what they're saying and how and why and all those sorts of things, which you couldn't measure before. So now you've got much more quantifiability. Now, the twist on this, though, people rebel if it feels like you have an AI overlord watching over you, kind of you know, telling you what to do or saying you're no good. If you serve the self-interest of the worker and make them look better, more productive, look like they're a better performer in the eyes of their boss and peers, wonderful. The things that p great customer service agents are good at are empathy and right. maybe context right, around what's happening. Being human, in other words. Yeah, and we can allow you can make them to more focus human. on that and not deal with the rote tasks of like finding information, right? Pulling out the account for information, figuring out like, you know, is what the customer is saying true? Like we can do all of that automation on the back end so that the agents can focus on making the customers feel good, right? Through through an empathetic conversation. My group is working in consumer uh, TV experiences. It, it sort of uh, takes on, it's for large pay TV operators to essentially have TV on every screen from the cloud. Um, and of course, people want to bring in data and advanced interfaces and make television a, a, a next gen experience. Uh, I would say that you could almost divide the user interface ideas that are being thrown out now as before Alexa and after Alexa. Uh, that literally, I think, is going to form the basis for where AI agent communication happens. It just wasn't, you know, Siri wasn't emerging as like a person that you dealt with. Uh, Alexa is. And, um, the number of prototypes that have been built on Alexa inside Ericsson on hackathon days has gone way up. There's a, a team in Israel that's made a really cool prototype. Uh, we're basically harnessing Alexa uh, with data so that you can be watching a sports game and say, hey, is Steph Curry uh, having a good game? And it'll say, yeah, his you know, percentage is above average. Uh, you know, he's he's uh, got the highest points in the game. Uh, and you say, show me the highlights. And it goes back and finds all the places where he had uh, scoring plays uh, and shows you some of those. So that's something you couldn't do with a remote control. It's something that's based largely on a bunch of metadata that's being generated on the fly by people typing in data into sports feeds and synthesizing that into an experience uh, that could in also be personalized for them.